bringing old ships to life. Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines and I hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to another video and in the video of today we shall talk about the sinking of the vessel the SS Caribou. Now of course starting with the details, she was owned by the government but run by the Newfoundland Railway. Instead of being an ocean liner, she was specifically designed as a passenger ferry, built by the Dutch shipbuilders Goodwin, Hamilton, S. Adams, Ltd. Located in the city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Now the ship would be built in 1925. Her tonnage would be 2.200 gross tons with her length being 265 feet. The vessel could go a speed of 14 and a half knots when fully loaded. The Caribou had the luxury of steam heat and electric lights in all her cabins. And due to her ice breaking design, she also provided aid in the seal hunt of the Newfoundland coast each spring. Now the vessel would be launched on 9 June 1925 in Schiedam. Again, this is in the Netherlands. Now during World War II, on the evening of 13 October 1942, the Caribou set sail from North Sydney for an 8 hour 178 kilometer voyage, accompanied by the Bangor class minesweeper, the HMCS Grandmere. Now on this voyage the Caribou was carrying a total of 237 passengers and crew, including 191 passengers, 118 service personnel, 73 civilians and 46 crew. Several mothers and their children were among the passengers, and many of the crew members were related. With German U-boats in the Gulf of the St. Lawrence having torpedoed merchant vessels and warships, Captain Benjamin Tavernor navigated with all lights out and followed an indirect route in accordance with wartime regulations. U-69, under command of Jurich Graf, was patrolling the area on the surface. Shortly before midnight, the shadowy forms of two ships were sighted. Graf chose to remain on the surface and moved ahead to get a better position for launching torpedoes. Grandmere was screening the caribou from astern consistent with naval instructions. However, at 3.21 a.m. Atlantic daytime, 3.51 in Newfoundland, Graf fired a torpedo at a range of 650 meters. It hit the ferry's starboard side in the middle 43 seconds later. The damage was instantaneous and catastrophic. The ferry's boilers exploded and destroyed several lifeboats and rafts. Frantic family members tried to find each other in darkened cabins and corridors before they fought their way through rushing seawater to get onto the deck. Survivors described the terror and indescribable chaos before the ferry went under five minutes later. Now, once in the water, many clung desperately to any floating debris they could find, in the hopes of survival. Some were fortunate enough to board the remaining lifeboats and rafts, but even this did not guarantee safety. 
many passengers had rushed out of their cabins in their night clothes. Once launched, two lifeboats capsized due to overloading, throwing their occupants into the freezing water. Amid the panic, some individuals gave their life belts to others. For example, naval nursing sister Margaret Brooke, who was later made a member of the Order of the British Empire for her ultimately futile efforts to save the life of her traveling companion, nursing sister Agnes Wilkie. Sadly, Nurse Wilkie would not survive the sinking. Throughout the night, people recited the Lord's Prayer and sang hymns. The HMCS Grandmere, under command of Lieutenant James Goodbert, encountered U-69 on the surface after the torpedo struck. Goodbert attempted to ram the submarine. U-69 then dived and Goodbert released a pattern of six depth charges over the spot to no avail. Now conditions were difficult and Grandmere could not maintain contact with its sonar. Whenever fleeting contact was established, the minesweeper fired additional depth charges. Unfortunately, U-69 managed to escape. At 5.20 Atlantic daytime, Goodbird ended the hunt and went back to rescue survivors, taking 103 on board. Now sadly, two of them would pass away on board. Grandmere then resumed its search for the U-boat. At 8.20, five other warships and several fishing vessels took over the search. Goodbird took the survivors back to North Sydney. Of the 237 people on board, only 101 would survive. Sadly, the captain of the SS Caribou, Captain Tavenor and his two sons would be amongst the lost. Amongst the survivors would be a 50-month-old baby who had been thrown overboard by its mother, who then jumped to her death. Let us never forget this tragedy. And that is the end of a video. Did you guys enjoy it? I certainly loved making this one. Uh, the tragedy of the SS Caribou is not a well-known one. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I quickly want to take a moment to thank all my new subscribers who have subscribed. Thank you all very much. It still blows my mind that so many of you guys actually enjoy my content. So thank you all very much. Now, if you have any friends who like ocean liners or ships, please show them my channel. Uh, that would help out a, a lot. Um, if you have any comments or thoughts on this video, please leave them down below. I absolutely love reading your guys' comments and uh, I read and reply to each and every one of them. So again, if you have any, if you have any uh, thoughts or comments, please leave them in the description down below. And uh, with that out of the way, guys, I wish you a good night or day, wherever you are. Stay safe and stay happy. And we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye. Follow old shipping lines on social media. Thanks for watching.